Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, a few weeks ago, I posted a, a food video uh, on uh, uh, YouTube Shorts and um, uh, somebody had asked me if I could do kind of a how-to for that. Um, now, you know, I, I haven't done a lot of them myself. Um, I'm kind of getting started with them, but I do have an understanding of, you know, video and food. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about, um, and I'm gonna show you my setup on how I put together those little food videos. And then at the very end, you will see the video that I just completed. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and here we talk about food photography. If that's something you're interested in, I'd urge you to subscribe and follow along for more videos. Uh, I hope this uh, split screen isn't going to be too distracting for you guys. I thought it might be kind of the best way to set this up um, to do a split screen of me kind of explaining kind of what's going on in the part that I filmed. There is no audio for that part, um, but I'm putting some audio to this part to kind of explain and, and walk you through kind of my setup. So um, like I said earlier, you know, I was asked if I could if I could show uh, how I set up these food videos. Um, it's a it's a typical video that you'll see on you know Instagram or TikTok, um, where it's just a a 90 degree shot down video, um, less than a minute. You're putting something together and then you're you know showing the end product. Um, so I, I've been having some fun working with some of those. I thought they'd be fun for helping grow my Instagram. Um, as as you know, I've used them on TikTok as well. Although TikTok, uh, I mean I don't really understand why anybody would be on TikTok to be honest with you. It's um at least for you know for doing anything kind of serious. TikTok's kind of a um I'm finding it's more of a playground, uh not not so much for uh serious creators, I guess. So but anyway, so so I concentrated these on reels and I've done three or four of these now. Um, I filmed one a couple days ago and I filmed myself filming one a couple days ago and that's what I'm gonna walk you through right now is kind of how I did that. So I'm not gonna talk about the editing process on the back end. If you're interested and in, you wanna see how I do that, um, how I go into my editing software and how I, I build that video, uh, let me know and we can, you know, we can, uh, I can put together a video for that and uh, uh, maybe something you'd be interested in seeing. So let me know. But to get started here, I'm just gonna kind of run this video uh, on my laptop that I've already kind of finished and then to kind of talk over what I'm doing so that you guys can kind of get an idea of of what my setup is, what my thinking is and why I do some of the things that I do. So, and if, if you've made these videos and, and you've got some advice for me, please, I'm all ears. Like I said, I, I've only made three or four of these and I think they've come up pretty well. Um, I, I like what I've been able to do, but you know, if, if you can, you know, if you've got some ideas, you've done these and, and have some suggestions, you know, please, you know, let me know. So. All right. So to start with, I've got this C-stand that I use. I'm using the C-stand right now. It's where the, the mic is sitting uh, right here. Um, really handy piece of equipment. They're on, you know, Amazon or, or Adorama for a hundred bucks. Um, and what I do in the C-stand is I have two arms that I bought. Uh, one is going to hold the camera. Uh, the other one is going to hold the uh, flat panel light that I have um, set up. So I've got uh, uh, light coming from two directions. Uh, you'll see a little bit later, I've got a soft box and I've got a light just coming straight in so that I can eliminate as many of the, the shadows inside the uh, the utensils of the, or the, the pot that I want to. Um, there is, you know, this, this recipe and specifically is a it's made in a pot, so it's a little bit of a higher side. So I wanna make sure I got some light right into there. Um, so I've got my camera fixed. You can see here in the uh, in the image, there's a, a bubble level that I have there. And I always use a bubble level to make sure that I've got uh, my camera as flat as possible. Um, you didn't see me use it because I'd already leveled it out and wanted to make sure I, I, I was changing lenses. Um, I will let you know the lens uh, settings that I use, the, the camera settings I use to film the video, and I'll put those up right here. Um, so you get an idea of kind of what I was using. The lens itself is a, a 24 to 70 f4. Um, here I'm bringing in the soft box because I do want to have, you know, uh, a, an extra soft, pretty light. Um, normally I shoot this, you know, and if you watch my past videos, I shoot tethered. 
Uh, not easy to do uh, when you're doing video, much easier for photos uh, based on the, the software that I use. Um, but uh, at this particular point, I didn't have my iPad available to me. So I had to go with the old traditional uh, standing on a step stool and um, getting my setup done that way. So here I'm just trying to get the lighting where I want it to be and to make sure that uh, uh, I've got good coverage um, and my settings match the lighting that I have. So once I've got the lighting set up, uh, I do want to make sure that I've got my uh, my framing done properly. So I'm using this uh, marble slab, um, trying to get that organized uh, so that it it sits squarely um, uh, in the camera frame. Um, we do, well, I do, we do, I do, when I'm shooting these, I, I shoot them in a vertical format. So because if you're looking at it on, on Instagram or TikTok, they're in the um, uh, vertical format of, you know, the 16 by nine, uh, which would make that what, a nine by 16. So uh, I, I set my camera up that way so that I'm not doing that flipping and editing uh, when I get into the post-processing. Um, so I want to make sure that I have everything as even as possible in that frame and not having to worry about uh, moving things around uh, when I get into post. So here comes the pot. And like I said, this recipe is a little bit more of a, um, it's a, it's a hot recipe. So I'm cooking this one, um, using the pot, you know, you've got much higher sides and I want to make sure that I've got enough light that gets in there so you can see what's going on. Um, you know, after kind of looking through this, uh, this whole setting, I decided I didn't like the way the, the marble background looked with the, uh, with the camp stove and I'm using a camp stove, a camp stove to, to, uh, do the cooking part of this. And I didn't like the way it looked. So I figured, you know, I'll just go straight off the, the white quartz top and, and do it that way. So now that that quartz top is gone, I kind of have to recenter everything and make sure that, um, that everything is, is dead center. Um, so that I've got, you know, I'm even on both sides and it looks, um, looks good in the camera. I don't want it to do that. Like I said earlier, I don't have to do that uh, in post. I want to make sure everything looks as good as possible in camera. So that I like where it's at. I like where the light's at. I like where the, the framing's at. The pot's in the right place. I'm going to go ahead and get all my ingredients set up. And what I do is I mean everything out. So everything is, is measured and weighted the way it's supposed to be for the recipe. And, uh, uh, I can get started once that's all done. It just makes it easier, makes it faster. So there's not big chunks of, of time that you're having to edit through. So now that I'm ready to start shooting, I get the light on, make sure that's all square. Here I'm going to double check the composition to make sure that it is where I want it to be, right? I want to make sure that I have um, uh, the, the depth of field, the aperture set at a higher number uh, so that I get everything in focus. I don't want it to be too shallow and there to be too much, um, uh, too much out of detail. So you can see here, that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Uh, and this is straight from, straight from the camera. There's a quick clap so I can sync these both up for you guys uh, side by side. So I lay the spatula in there and I want to make sure that now that I've got my focus where I want it to be, I'm going to focus basically on the bottom of that pan where that spatula was sitting. And I'm going to lock that in so it doesn't move again, right? So now I should be all set and ready to go and I can start putting my recipe together. So just for consistency, I try and bring each of the ingredients in from the same direction on the same side. As I, as I cut this together, um, it'll be, you know, a much quicker cut. So you'll see, you know, how that kind of looks towards the very end. Now that the recipe is mixed, I can turn the little camp stove on. And what I'm making here, just in case you're curious, I'm doing just a, a, a Carolina Gold barbecue sauce, just a mustard-based barbecue sauce. Uh, very simple, so good on ribs and and pulled pork, things like that. So uh, if you guys want the recipe, when I when I post the short, I'll have the recipe attached to that short in the uh, description as well. So now because this takes a little bit of time, I'm going to give you a 
a fast forward through through the process. Basically, this simmered for about 10 minutes. Come to the end and it's done. So now the next part is uh, kind of showing the finished product. So what I'm going to do here now is uh, in the meantime, while that was all cooking, I had put in uh, a, a pan of St. Louis ribs uh, four or five hours prior. Uh, so now I'm going to get set up for that final shot. And this one's going to be a shot on the 105 lens. And I'll put the settings for what I'm going to do here up as well. Um, but I'm going to shoot this at 120 frames per second because I want to get that nice, pretty slow-mo of me taking a brush and brushing those ribs. So um, here I'm making sure I got the angles right. I've got my tripod set up. I don't have to worry too much about the uh, the lighting. Um, I know that that I've got a, a good spread for what I want to see. I don't want to have to worry too much about shadows in this one. Um, so the light coming from all angles is going to be great. Um, I want to be able to shoot, make sure you can see the video itself. So. I'm pulling out the ribs, getting those settled, um, making sure that we're good to go. Um, they're not quite done at this point yet, but I do want to kind of get them out, brush them, get them set up. And uh, uh, this is going to be my dinner tonight. So I do want to make sure that I, I, you know, finish those up and make sure they're cooked properly. So, so like I said, now I've got, you know, I've got the, uh, the set all done, the settings for the camera using the 105 so I can get nice and tight uh, and get a nice macro on there. And um, I will go ahead and get a beautiful brush of barbecue sauce. 120 frames per second in slow-mo. So in my camera, when I'm doing 120 frames per second, what it does is it crops into uh, 1080p, whereas I normally shoot everything else at 4K. Uh, so what I have to do for this in post-processing is basically increase the size. Um, so uh, I will, you know, scale this up to 200% just to make sure that um, it is going to fit the size that I want. Now, the beauty of doing this for um, for the video is, is this right now is scaled up for you guys, but when I make the video for Instagram, I'm gonna make the whole thing in 4K and then scale down to, uh, to 1080 HD uh, for the video, so. So that's pretty much it. That's the setup itself. That's kind of how I put it all together. Um, I'm going to show you now. Here is the final edited video of all the stuff you just watched me film. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, I do want to say, you know, in the last, you know, six weeks, my my subscriber count has jumped a lot. And I want to thank everybody who's who's uh, who's signed up for my channel and, and is enjoying the content. Uh, please, if you have, you know, any requests or any questions or anything like that, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for um, ways to be able to uh, answer your questions, whether it's in video format or just um, through the comment section alone. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up on your way out. I uh, hope you guys are doing well, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, and bye for now.